Let's prepare our notches and wears. So now we are going to see about the notches and wears in this lecture. So first let us see what is notch and what is wear. So notch means it is the opening that is provided in the side of any tank or any channel such that the liquid surface in the tank is below the top edge of the opening. So what does this means? You just imagine a tank and you just do a opening in any one side okay so what happens till the bottom of that opening only the water level could be there in the tank otherwise it overflows above that okay so here i have just drawn a triangular notch here so if the water is present in this tank so imagine this as a tank here so if this is the tank means what happens the water flow will be coming through this notch and only up to this bottom edge Okay, so up to this only the water can be kept inside the tank. So this is only called as notch and this is used to measure the rate of the flow. So there are different types rectangular, trapezoidal and uh, triangular notch like that. There are different types of notches are available. And the second one is the weir. So weir means it is nothing but the concrete or masonry structure that is built across a river to allow the excess water. So we have seen this weir type structures many times. So across a the river they will be constructing uh, material so that the water could be hold there. It can be saved there and the overflowing water alone is passing through the downstream. So this is only called as weir. So this is also has many shapes. So here this is also used to measure the rate of the flow. So we are going to see the next two terms which is important in this notches and weir. So this is the simple diagram I have drawn here. So with this you just uh, that is connect the nape and the crest. So nape means it is a layer of the fluid flowing above the weir or below the notch. So when you take the weir it flows above the weir sorry above the notch okay so if you see here i have taken a notch here so the top fluid layer no so that layer is only called as nape here so when you take the weir it is above the weir so the top layer of the weir is only it is called as the nape so here why it's changing that is here above here below means here this point is only your notch okay but here this whole portion is your Weir. So only it is changing like this. So when you see the sill or crest and when you see the notch, it is bottom edge of the notch. So this bottom edge, you know, the bottom portion of the water flowing. So this bottom portion is only called as the crest. When you take the weir, it is top edge of the weir. So it is the top edge. So this is only your weir. So this will be your top edge. Or you can say the bottom line of the water flowing also. But this is the correct definition that they will be asking in the questions. So I have given you the same thing. So it is the top edge of the weir. So this is all about your nape and crest. So these points are very important. So as I told you already, these both are used for the calculation of the flow that is the discharge that is happening in the uh, channel or in any tank okay so here where we use notch and where we use weir means when the flow is very high like rivers we use uh, like rivers we will be using beer whereas it is a small tank and uh, whether we are going to find the flow in our laboratories means in all our laboratories we will be having the notches no so in small quantity of water when it is flowing we use notches for calculating the uh, discharge so why we are using notch in small quantities means that also we will be seeing now so here that is the formula so you can directly study this formula for calculating the quantity of discharge so the first one is rectangular notch or rectangular weir for both notch and weir the formula is same only so it is theoretical value is 2 by 3 root 2g l into h power 3 by 2 so the l is the length of the crest and h is the head that is above the crest the water level that is present above the crest no so that will be your head value and when it is coming to actual discharge you have to just multiply the formula with the coefficient of discharge so coefficient of discharge they'll be giving in the question when you are uh, taking any weir or notch problem the second thing is a triangular notch or triangular weir so here the actual discharge is 8 by 15 into CD into 2 uh, root 2G into tan theta by 2 into h power 5 by 2. 
so here this theta tan theta by 2 is an extra term coming here and we have h fiber h power phi by 2 okay so this theta is nothing but the angle of the triangle that we are providing in the notch so here you can see the diagram of that triangular notch okay so why we are using this notch is only for uh, uh, smaller quantity and also preferably triangular notches used certainly for calculating the smaller discharge so why means you can see that when there is a small amount of discharge is only happening the head will be more because in a triangle the bottom portion is narrowing down so here the water level could be easily raised up but whereas in the case of rectangular or trapezoidal if you see means it has a wide bottom so water level could be raised like this only to a small amount only so it is always preferably used that triangular notch or wear is used in the case of uh, very minimum uh, discharge is happening in any channel or what okay so this is the case and the next one is the trapezoidal notch or wear so trapezoidal means nothing but the addition of the triangular and rectangular so if you take this as your trapezoidal this will be your rectangular shape and here half area here half area so when you join this you'll be getting a triangular so you just add these both formula so you'll be getting this formula and this formula so you'll be getting the value for discharge actual discharge of trapezoidal notch so this is all about your notches and views and this q formula is very important in this lecture so here in the question how they'll be giving you means they'll be just giving you the h and l value alone the length of the crest and height above the crest alone so with respect to that itself you can find the q actual value and the cd value also they'll be providing you so that simple type question only they'll be asking from this chapter thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on spillways